Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and in this series we are following me building a large, low-relief Victorian hotel for my engaged city layout, Chandwell. I've got building one to a point where the rest of the hotel can be built. It has 10 windows with frames I made from sticky labels and birthday cake box. It has three areas of stonework which will be visible in the final build, and it has a steeply pitched roof to hide its very skinny 10mm depth. So in part 3, let's take a look at how I moved from cereal box mock-up to this completed building. I always create a card layer onto which I fix the cover layers of texture. This building is quite long, so I couldn't make the base layer out of a single sheet. I therefore split it into three sections, each printed onto one A4 sticky label. I did this twice, with each version having slightly different width sections. Although I use cereal packet for my mock-ups, I use greyboard for my actual buildings. I find that the uniform width and density of the greyboard gives much more consistent results. I stuck the base layer labels onto six sheets of half millimetre greyboard. I bought 500 sheets of this on eBay and including postage, it works out at just under six pence a sheet. Once cut, I used glue stick to stick the overlapping pieces together. I use these Q-Connect glue sticks at the moment. They're a good size of 40 grams and I buy them in packs of 10 on eBay for 70 pence each. For denser items like the chimneys, I use 1mm grey board, which I buy in packs of 200 for just under 13 pence a sheet. Here I am using a scale model scenery right angled jig to line up three rectangles which will give body to the chimney. I use quite thin PVA glue for gluing card elements like this because it flows really nicely and produces a good bond. I bought 500 millilitres of this multi-purpose glue on eBay for £7. And my last bottle lasted two years. Once the base layer is in place, I add the cover layers. Most of this building will be behind other parts of the hotel, so there are not very many parts where the textures will be visible. I printed the textures onto my standard paper, this 110 GSM ProJet matte photo paper. I've used this paper for almost 10 years. It's smooth enough to give a really crisp print but thin enough to easily fold and wrap. It's also cheap. I buy it in batches of 200 sheets on eBay and it works out at a shade under five pence a sheet. I use slightly thicker PVA for attaching my cover layers. I prefer the control that PVA gives over a glue stick for this job. Thin glue I use for card is no good because it soaks through the paper and makes my ink run. I therefore use this super strength PVA for this job. This 500 milliliters bottle costs £7.70 on eBay. I print the textures separately so that I can wrap the texture around the chimney and the window openings. I use the back of my scalpel to score the folds for the chimney. For the windows, I just slice through the paper, score, glue and fold. I use this little silver stick tool to help. I have no idea what it is. I bought it in Hobbycraft's knitting section, but it seemed to be exactly what I wanted. Once in place, the texture is starting to look exactly like I envisioned. It's only five pence a sheet, but I reuse my printer paper as much as I can. You don't need to send a full A4 sheet of paper through your printer, as long as what you're printing is arranged at the top of the sheet. Here I am, putting a small scrap of photo paper into the paper tray of my printer. I need to push it in with a bit of full-sized paper. But once printing, the printer has no way of knowing that the paper it's taking in is not full length, so it just merrily prints out the components and spits the paper out when done. I use AK Interactive Matte Varnish to give the building an initial seal. I do this mainly to cover up any spots of PVA which otherwise dry shiny. I just brush it on with a paintbrush. The photo paper I use ensures that the ink does not run and the varnish makes the colours a little deeper and a little bit more realistic in my opinion. There are going to be more than 120 windows in this hotel. I designed the frames that are 0.75mm smaller on each side than the holes into which they go. I print these onto sticky labels, then one at a time stick them onto the old packaging from a chocolate cake. The white frames are only 0.26mm wide. Using a scalpel and a ruler, it's possible to crisscross the frame from top to bottom and left to right, and then peel out the resulting squares to leave the window glazing shining through. It always amazes me just how fine and delicate the resulting window frame is. I cut this out and then stick it with the thin PVA to the back of the building. This structure is going to be 10 millimeters deep, but it has no interior detail, so I can be quite rough with the next part. I cut strips of card 
and arranged them in a lattice over the back of the building's face. I just used a thin PVA glue and slotted the card directly into place. I used a double layer to make the top and bottom as these will provide rigidity to the construction. Two larger strips were added to the top of the lattice. I chose this width as it's the widest I could get all of the components printed onto one sheet of A4. I just glued it on. And then I pressed the whole thing with the Chandwell cookery books. Once the glue was set, I had a surprisingly rigid and solid building, which will be a sturdy foundation for the whole hotel. I cut a set of triangles to the correct dimensions of the roof, based on the serial packet mock-ups. I arranged these along the top of the building using the thin glue. I printed the roof in three parts, just like the face. I took the time to add parallel horizontal lines which will help me get the tiles lined up when the time comes to add the roof properly. I also marked on the positions of the other parts of the building to help me when arranging those components. Running a black sharpie pen along the edge will make things nicer once I eventually add the tiles to the roof. So I'm 34 days into the hotel project now. I've spent 43 hours to get this far and I've used £3.75 worth of materials. If you're enjoying this series, please give this video the thumbs up, as this really does encourage me to keep spending time making this series. In the next episode, I hope to show you the hotel's entrance on the station concourse. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.